Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today I'm going to be talking about 10 eyeshadow palettes that I haven't reached for in uh, months. <laughs> weeks and weeks, if not months. I saw Kaylee Wesley do this video a couple of weeks ago, and I think technically it's like a tag. So if I can find who originally created the tag, I'll link their channel and Kaylee Wesley's channels down below. But it was just basically an excuse for me to go through my eyeshadow palette collection again pick out some things I haven't used and I've seen a bit of a theme come through. I tend to reach for palettes seasonally. So a lot of palettes in here are ones that I love to use like in the fall. I'm a huge fall person. I love fall. I cannot wait for fall. So I've noticed that I've seen quite a few fall palettes in here and then like some palettes that like I used either for a video and never went back to or that like, I've been meaning to go back to and just have it. Not to say these aren't good palettes. Most of these are really good palettes and I've made it through several of my declutters and I love them, but I'm not reaching for them. A quick note for those interested, I am testing black lipstick. So the one I am wearing today is Sleepwalker from Black Moon Cosmetics. I'm impressed. I actually really like this one so far. So, <laughs> all right. So I'm not going in any particular order here. I stacked them by size, so I think we're just gonna go by size. The first palette I have here is from e.l.f., and this is their Rose Gold Sunset Palette, which is a stunning palette. Here it is close up. You get a mixture of mattes and shimmers in here, so it's not one of their Mad for Matte palettes, but it comes in the same packaging. There are 10 pans, and I paid right around $9.99 for this. I really love this palette. I did a whole video when I first got this. I did a couple of looks with it and a full review. I'll link that up in the cards if you would like to see it. But again, like this is such a fall toned palette for me. Look at these oranges. I love this orange shimmer. It is one of the best orange like shadows I own. The shades are very buttery and they blend so well. This is like one of the best palettes I think e.l.f. has done and I love it. But again, since I've got like this kind of pigeonhole that I've put it in like as a fall palette, I'm not reaching for it outside of like fall. So I need to work on that, but you're probably going to hear that a little bit throughout this video. The next palette I have is actually quite old. I don't I haven't used it in a bit, so I can't really tell if it's expired or not, but it's one of the oldest palettes that I own. And this is the Urban Decay Naked 2 palette. This is one of the first, like, higher-end palettes I ever bought. The first palettes I ever got were from Too Faced. And then after that, I saved up and I bought this one. So this is just such a nice neutral palette. Here are all the shades right here. I am very close to hitting, like, accidental pan over here but I just love these shades. If I have one critique, it's I don't think we have enough mattes in here, but all the shimmers are gorgeous. I love the shimmers in here. I love the shades. This is why it's lasted so long in my collection. I've got some good memories with this, but also these shades are gorgeous. And honestly, I think this palette was better than the original Naked palette. I bought this, I wanna say back in like late 2015-ish, and it was right around $52. I love this palette. I love the shades in here. I actually, I need to pull this out and use it again to see if the formula has changed at all, cause I'm not quite sure. It has been a long time, but I don't see anything. It doesn't smell off. I don't see anything wrong with the shadows, but I do need to actually use them and see if I see any difference when it's on the eye and actually in use. I need to start pulling this out. I think like more for like travel. This is a very sturdy case. It's got a nice mirror and my go-to for travel is a nice neutral look I can do and a matte black because that is so multitasking for someone with really dark hair. You can use it in your brows, you can use it as a liner, you can use it in a hairline. It's everything I'm looking for. And I tend to bring my Lorac Pro, the original one, because it's got everything and it's got that matte black. I'm gonna try to switch it up and maybe bring this for my upcoming trips. The next two palettes I have, they're both from Kylie Cosmetics. So let's jump in first with the Blue Honey palette. This, I fell in love with this palette, even though it's, looking at it at first, you might not think it's anything special, but I just love the shades in here. I love the shimmers and Ah, I love it. So it is this nine pan palette that you have right here. You've got some blues, a mustard, a neutral kind of white beige shade, and then this beautiful like copper shimmer that I adore. I love this shade so much that I used to pull this palette out just to use that shade right there. I also did, um, I don't know if it was a full video or just like a one look and a review on this palette. I'll throw it up in the cards if you want to see it. 
but I, I really like this. This is a bit unique. I don't really have any palette in my collection that is similar enough to this to warrant decluttering. I just, I like the combination of shades in here too. It, it gets me inspired. It makes me a little bit more creative. And I love the ratio of matte to shimmer. So you've got five mattes and four shimmers in here. So I love this palette. If anything, I think I'm still testing out the peach palette that I just picked up from Kylie, but so far this is my favorite Kylie palette. The next Kylie palette, speaking of fall, that I have, this is the Halloween palette. So I'll, first of all, I'm dying for this packaging. It's gorgeous. But when you open it up, this one actually comes with a mirror. The Blue Honey does not have a mirror. And these are your shades. So these are your nine pans right here. I picked this up because it was a Halloween release that was different. It wasn't like every other Halloween palette that was coming out. I haven't reached for this one as much as I have the other Kylie palettes that I own, but I still think this is unique. I like this orange right down here. I like the different shades that were chosen to be shimmers in this palette. And overall, I think this is just a really well done limited edition release, which was it limited edition? I'm pretty sure it was. I do not think this is available anymore. But again, because of its name, because of the shades, I have pinch and hold of this as a fall palette when I probably shouldn't have. <laughs> I need to work on just doing a better job of rotating my palettes overall, but also not just keeping palettes because I'm like, oh, that'll be great in October. You know, like I should be getting used year round. The next palette that I have is from ColourPop and this was their first palette and it was an early favorite of mine. And this is the Yes Please palette. This came out as a dupe originally, I believe, for the Natasha Denona Sunset palette because when that palette came out, like Natasha Denona like broke the makeup industry. Everyone was talking about this crazy expensive palette. Everyone was like, oh, you need this palette. It's gorgeous. Look at the shades. Look at the, the, the formula is beautiful. Look at me wearing it. I was hella tempted, but I didn't buy the Sunset palette. I waited almost a full year because the thing was sold out for like months and it was coming back in stock in Sephora like the November after it came out. And I was like, okay, you know what? If you really want it, you're gonna save up, you're gonna wait for the Sephora sale, and that's when you're gonna get it. So I did. So I do have the original Sunset palette, but I did, a, I don't know if I actually did a video, but I remember comparing these two and just based on the price points alone, I don't think the Sunset palette is, I don't think it's really worth that price point. Again, I didn't pay the full price point. I got it on sale. Just for the shades and just for like what it is, I don't think it's worth that much. And I think you can get something very similar with this palette right here. So these are all of the shades. I like to rearrange my ColourPop palette. So I popped out the shades and I rearranged it so that I had all the mattes up here. And then I had all the shimmers in one row down here. So this isn't how it originally comes. So if you buy the Yes Please today, it's not going to look like this. That being said, this is only $16 versus the 120 whatever the Natasha Denona is. So this is a great palette. Honestly, I think it's worth every penny. I think ColourPop did an amazing job with making this their first palette. They've got a little palette crazy sense, but... As this is their original, I think this is 100% worth it. That being said, I have not reached for this. This is a year-round palette, mainly even, maybe even more of a summer palette, but I've been trying to reach for some other palettes instead, mainly my Natasha Denona's, because <laughs> they were worth a lot more. I paid a lot more for them. But I haven't touched this one in a bit, but I do think this is a great palette, and I'm never gonna get rid of it. <laughs> I don't care. I'm never getting rid of it. The only downside to this, I think, is the packaging. I would love it if they would just repackage this because the white packaging just makes this look super grody over time. I wish I could clean it a little bit better, but I've tried and the shadows just stain in between, so it's just, it's just gonna look like that. Speaking of good old Natasha Denona, the next palette is the Leela palette. Because I rarely, I honestly, why did I buy this? I think I was just online and... I had gift cards. I think I bought this around my birthday because I tend to get a lot of Sephora and Ulta gift cards around my birthday. But quite honestly, I don't know why I picked this up, but uh. out of every Natasha Denona palette, I think this is the one I would least likely be able to or be drawn towards using more often. So I've actually kind of been thinking of like selling it because <laughs> it was expensive and I'm not using it. I've used this like probably less than 10 times overall right? I've actually been on this thought journey 
thought journey. But I've been thinking about like some more problematic products that I own, ones that I really haven't used, and I was thinking about selling them. I've never sold makeup before. I do like to declutter and give to friends and family, but not a lot of people I know are into makeup. And when it comes to like these more high budget items, I was thinking of reselling a couple of items. So let me know down below if you guys would be interested. I of course would not be jacking the price up. I'd be putting it lower than what I bought it for because it is used. And I'd be using some app to do so, but I'm really thinking about it specifically because of this palette and uh, a couple or not a couple but one more palette and a highlighter that I just have not really used and I don't think I'm going to use. That being said, these are all the shades. It's very pretty when you look at it but I don't reach for purple. I don't even when I'm playing with makeup, my first thought is not, ooh, I want purple eyeshadow. So I, I, I had like a brain lapse. I don't know why I got this palette, to be honest. The next palette was one that I was like really hyped for and pretty excited for. And I did do a video. I think I did a video on this. This is the Jeffree Star Thirsty palette. Now, this was the summer release last year. And I gotta say, you know, top row, bottom row, very summer very summer the shades are actually really nice the middle row i feel like belongs to a different palette i don't know why these are all put together like this because they don't really work together whenever i'm using the top row and the bottom row i'm not reaching for the middle row as a shimmer and whenever i use the middle row i'm bringing in other shades i'm bringing in other mattes so could the helicopters please just shush okay so i don't think this fits together and I mentioned that before when I talked about this palette but I gotta say the shades are actually really pretty and once you use them in a combination that actually works they're pretty I just never reach for this and also I think it was a bit overpriced this was too much money for what I got the next palette is one from makeup revolution and this was a collab with Emily Noel and this is the Emily edits once Emily edit once palette. First thing is that this thing is gigantic. So, okay, let's just do it. That's my head and this is the palette. This thing is huge. You've got a nice huge mirror in here, which is nice. And these are all of your shades. I did do a video when this first came out. It was like a collab video. I think it was a palette bingo. And I liked the shades that I had then. Admittedly, I've only used this a few times since and I've seen I've seen a lot of youtubers Like when they first used this they liked it and then when they tested it out more they kind of flipped and said the the Formula wasn't really there things had to be really built up. That is something makeup revolution as a brand I've noticed the shadows you really do need to build them up But the shimmers actually look really nice if you apply them with glitter glue and like with your finger. That being said, I feel like the fact that this palette takes a little bit more work and the fact that it's gigantic is really what's holding me back from using this more often. I did declutter her face palette because those shades didn't work for me, but I held on to this because I really wanted to test it out more, get some more use out of it, and really confirm my thoughts on this because I have seen so many people kind of flip after they've used this more. So I still haven't reached for it. <laughs> I'm gonna work on that, but I am still holding on to it. Okay, we only have two more palettes left. We're almost there. The next palette is the Morphe Jaclyn Hill palette. So I pulled this back out and I did a, um, like a palette resurrection a few weeks to a few months ago, just because I actually really like this palette. Unfortunately, Jaclyn Hill is a hot mess and a half and I'm not supporting her. I'm not buying anything else from her brand or any other collabs. But this original palette was so good, I'm like angry at it. It's honestly worth the hype. N that cannot be said for the rest of her products, but for this one, is, it was actually really good. I bought this back when this first came out. It was the second restock. So like it sold out like in minutes. They restocked it again and I was able to grab it then. And honestly, it's huge, which is a downside for me for reaching for palettes, but... Ah, I can't explain really how much I love this palette, even though it's like mainly neutrals. I also feel like I like this palette because it was one of the first collabs I ever bought, but then also it was like one of the first palettes that everyone on YouTube was using because it was a YouTuber collab. It was huge. It was Morphe. It was Jaclyn Hill. Everyone was doing tutorials. So I remember I just had so many tutorials to look for. There were so many different ideas. There were so many th different things you could do with this palette. And I think that's part of the huge reason why I liked this so much. Because there were so many things. It was bringing people together. It was giving me good ideas back when I didn't have really 
that much experience and just needed to follow tutorials. So I feel like that's where these kind of Morphe palettes shine. It's like they're pretty affordable. Not this one. This one, they jacked the price up to like 30 something dollars. But for the most part, the Morphe palettes were affordable. And I think one of the main reasons for them was because it was easier to follow a tutorial if you had a huge palette with a lot of shades and the influencer or the beauty youtuber could just point and then show you what you're doing because I definitely learned a lot that way too. Yeah so I'm gonna hold on to this one because I actually I still really like it. I stand behind I stand behind this product. I don't know if I really recommend it at this point knowing what else has happened with Jaclyn but this is actually a really good palette. Last but certainly not least we have a palette from BH Cosmetics. This is the BH Cosmetics Zodiac Love Signs palette. The original Zodiac palette was, and still is, my favorite BH Cosmetics palette to date. I loved everything about it except for the highlighter because that highlighter was kind of garbage. This is the sister palette or the second palette to that one. The shades are a lot warmer. The shades are a little bit more varied, a little bit more colorful. The last one was pretty neutral, but it did have some nice pops of green and pink. This one is very warm with the exception of like up here with Aquarius, Capricorn, and Sagittarius. I really like this palette and I actually like the highlighter in here more than the original Zodiac palette because this one actually blends out. My issue with the original Zodiac palette is that that highlighter just like sticks in one spot and you can't blend it into your skin so it just looks like a, it looks like a runway stripe on your face or... If you use it on your inner corner, it can look okay there, but I also wanted it to be multitasking, which is kind of what they're advertising it as here. And this one actually blends out and looks nice. It's both an inner corner highlight, a brow bone highlight, and a face highlight, whereas the other one doesn't really. That being said, I don't reach for this. <laughs> I think I've used this like twice, but it's a very pretty palette, and I know the formula is there. I tested the shades out. And I know the formula is just as good as the original Zodiac palette. I love the baked shades all around, and I love the mattes. I'm just not reaching for these colors. But I'm not gonna get rid of this. It's really affordable. I love this line. I think they, they did a mistake by trying to make a bunch of mini Zodiac palettes for each month. That kind of fell flat. So I don't think they're gonna make any more Zodiac palettes. But I don't think we need any more. Like between the first one and this one, I think that's really all you need. But I really like it. I just don't reach for this. And because of the size and everything, it tends to just go to the bottom of my drawer. And that's kind of where it stays. All right. And that's it. Those are 10 palettes I haven't reached for in months. I've actually been thinking that I need to resurrect my palette resurrection series and really bring out some more older palettes, do some looks with them, talk about them a bit more. So if there's any palette in here or any palette in my collection that you're particularly interested in seeing a palette resurrection done on, let me know down below because I really want to start doing that a little bit more. Thank you guys so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Bye. Thank you.